were super excited to have a kid. Perfect delivery, everything was normal. We didn't know anything was wrong until the next morning. She was really cold. So they tried to warm her up, they couldn't warm her up, and she just, for some reason, this nurse decided to do a blood sugar test, and her blood sugar just didn't register. So they rushed her into the NICU. It was pretty shocking. Docs searched all over the world to try to figure out what was wrong with her. There was a fellow who came down and he said, okay, we figured it out. She has glycogen storage disease. She needs to go home with this tube in her nose. You need to get CPR training. You need to get heart monitor training. And she's gonna need to eat you know, this many hours. You need to learn how to do tube feeding. It was, and he told us all this and our world just turned upside down. And I was crying, saying, you know, they got a tube down my daughter's nose into her stomach and they're telling me I gotta feed her with a syringe. You know, we're a month in as new parents. You know, I was scared enough to figure out how I was gonna change the child's diaper, much less figure out how to keep a kid alive that couldn't maintain their own blood sugar. Yeah, it was pretty traumatic for us in, in the beginning. Grant and I, we had two beautiful, healthy daughters, and I convinced him to have another baby. We welcomed our beautiful baby boy, and after he was born, the nurse said something like, you know, I've worked here for 12 years and I've never seen a baby with blood sugar that low. So I started panicking. They put him on IV and they'd wean him off the IV and then sure enough his blood sugar would drop and they didn't know why and they would bring him back into the newborn nursery and back in an IV. So their advice was just feed him more frequently. Feed him every two and a half to three hours. But the doctors did say, you seem nervous. So if you're nervous, you might want to go to the drugstore and get a glucometer. When we brought him home from the hospital and I tested his blood sugar, I mean, to prick your newborn baby's skin routinely, 10, 14 times a day, I mean, it doesn't feel right. When he was six weeks old, and I said to Grant, this kid is gonna sleep tonight. And sure enough, three and a half hours later, he cried. I picked him up and I held him in my arms and we fell asleep in the rocking chair. I woke up about an hour later and he was sweating profusely. In a matter of minutes, we fed him and as we were feeding him, his eyes opened, you could see life coming back into him. He sucked down a bottle so quickly, and we tested his blood sugar, and the glucometer said the word low. So we immediately called 911. We were back in the hospital for about another eight days, and it was confirmed that he had glycogen storage disease. At the time when we got the diagnosis, neither of us had any idea what was involved. Then to be kind of hit with this is uh, a shock. People with glycogen storage disease are missing an enzyme in their liver that processes glucose. And glucose is the fuel that our bodies need for every cell in our bodies to function. So it gets trapped in the liver in the form of glycogen. That's why it's called glycogen storage. So when the body needs a sense of fuel, the liver isn't, doesn't have the key to unlock itself and the glucose won't get released. So he needs a constant source of glucose externally. He has to be fed frequently and right now it's every two hours by day and every two and a half hours by night. So that means we live by the clock. We set alarms all the time. We set two alarms in the middle of the night. The alarm has to be somewhere where you have to get out of bed to turn it off for fear of, wake, of not waking up because missing a meal could have fatal consequences. This disorder until the 1970s, you didn't survive. So you died. And then a uh, doctor out of uh, Boston Children's, uh, Dr. Wolosoff, invented this cornstarch therapy. Cornstarch is a long chain carbohydrate which breaks down very slowly and it's been proven to keep blood sugar levels stable. Without the cornstarch, you have to eat even more frequently. There is no medicine. It's just diet and maintenance. And that's it. And cornstarch really is our magic elixir. We're pumping liquid cornstarch into his body 10, 12 times a day, and that's the only thing we have right now. We really struggled when Samantha was a baby, and we had debated if we should have another child. Before we were able to really make a decision on which way to go, we found out I was pregnant. <laughs> we wouldn't change a thing because then we wouldn't have our delicious Katie, but we were tested in utero, and we knew that she had it and we knew what to expect. So Samantha is just about 16, 
and Katie is 12, and they still have to eat about every three hours and drink uncooked cornstarch every three hours around the clock. They sleep through the night, they have a G-tube in their belly, and I wake up and I, and I feed them their cornstarch. So I get up at 3 a.m. every night to feed them. I'm Katie and I'm 12 years old. Me and my sister both have GSD. I can't have milk, I can't have some cereals. I've always wanted to try a banana, I can't have a banana. Or like, I want to try a donut. Like, I want to see what it tastes like. My parents, they do worry. I feel bad sometimes because, like, my mom or my dad has to get up in the middle of the night to go and give me my cornstarch. Right now, there's one physician who is the world's foremost expert on glycogen storage disease. And he brought his program from Harvard to the University of Florida, Dr. David Weinstein, who has dedicated his life to this disease, and he's fighting for our children every single day. He sees patients from every state, and he travels the world, helping to teach other physicians how to treat so that babies don't die anymore. He is a beacon of hope for all of us. Children's Fund for Glycogen Storage Disease is a foundation that is dedicated to funding research to find a cure for GSD-1. We are a very small foundation. We're run 100% by volunteers. Every single dollar that is donated goes directly to research. There's no overhead. Everyone on the board is either a parent or a relative of someone who has GSD. Foundation, it's really our lifeline to hope and to a cure for GSD. So incredibly humbled every single day by all the support that comes in. I mean, we couldn't be where we are today without them. The research that's being done now is light years from where we were 10 years ago. It's actually a very exciting time. We funded the work on a glycosade, which is a super starch that allows some of these kids to sleep through the night. I mean, which absolutely changes the lives of their families, of these kids. And now we're close to figuring out how to end this forever. We have funded studies that have cured this disease in mice, and we've now cured it in nearly a dozen dogs. We are a year away from putting an application into the FDA to get approval for human trials. We know exactly how to cure this. We know the vector we need to use, we know the gene we need to deliver, we know where to put that gene with a little bit of time and probably three to five million dollars, we will have a cure for this and be ready to deliver that to the 600 kids in the United States and probably less than 5,000 people around the world and eliminate it. Because our reach is so small, we have trouble generating revenue to move that research forward. If we can reach people who have the wherewithal to be able to, you know, give us the money, we can cure this. Our life is affected in every single thing that we do. There is absolutely no time to relax. It's changed everything that we do. For 15 years, could you imagine having to wake up every single night? No matter how exhausted you are, no matter where you are, and having to think about that every night when you go to sleep. We have the opportunity here to cure a disease that is potentially fatal if not managed properly. Your contribution will make a difference. We are so close. There are plenty of places that you can give your money uh, that will make a difference. But I don't know who can point to a place where you can give your money and know for sure that you can eliminate a disease. This cure is going to happen. But in the meantime, I just, we love every minute with him and, and he's, he's the best. It is so frustrating to know that it's money that's getting in the way of a cure for a child. I worry that if we don't find the funding, this is it for them for the rest of their life, that they will be living in fear. Probably the first thing I would do if I didn't have GST was eat a banana. 
one day I will be able to eat a banana. I know I will. And um, I feel really fortunate that there's a lot of people who care a lot about this. My sister and I thank all of you for all of your support and your helping. Thank you.